To make you aware, this podcast will contain conversations around mental health and well-being and could include issues of a sensitive nature. This is a podcast from Torvine Talks CIC. with Martin and Martin from the choir. Now, which Martin shall I go to first? This Martin. He's that Martin. Higher there. ranking than, than I am. So Martin, tell me a little bit about Pontley with Choir. Pontley with Mill Choir have been in existence for 120 years this year. Wow. Okay. So that's a major celebration for us. We think it's a tremendous achievement. And it started only a few hundred yards up the road from here, we're in Abel Radio, they started in the bush. Right. The bush pub, which is just about 300 yards away. So it's great to be back in Upper Cumbra at our roots. We really look forward to our 120th year of celebration. 120 years. Now, how long have you been with the choir? I've been with the choir almost 20 years. I was in a small Mayhouse choir before that, uh, called the Melitones. My father was in that choir before me. Okay. And I was asked to join there. Uh, and I was in there for quite a long time until numbers became too small to be viable. And when I came from a party, we were staging 14 people mm. and came here and we were staging 60 people. The difference was mm. immense. Things have changed. Covid has changed quite a great deal for us in that we've got members, a membership of about 40 now. We do well to stage 30 people because we have some on long-term illness. So we are on a recruitment drive. We're very much looking for people, preferably who can sing. And if they can sing in tune and sing (laughs) hard, even better. So from one Martin to the other Martin. Martin, how long have you been part of the choir? I joined the choir in 2000. So next year will be 25 years. I understand that uh, Martin has given you a quick potted history of the choir. But certainly if the accent of this is on well-being, it can be the saving grace for many people. Particularly I first started the choir, it was like um, a a group of new friends and well welcomed me into the choir certainly that, that's always meant a great deal to me and something we've tried to reciprocate with every new member that comes through the door what would you say then with regard to to well-being what would you say is the benefit of being in a choir i think uh, from my perspective it's just having that camaraderie the, the, those friends that you get to know i've been in the choir for 25 years with, with other people who have been here for longer than myself wow. you know that's very important to me i'm a ex-rugby man and the choir sort of replaced the rugby camaraderie for, for me you know mm. from, from my perspective so ian then you're the chair how did you become part of the choir I bumped into a friend of mine walking the, walking the dog, actually, and we got into conversation. From that conversation, th- th- this gentleman was, was an existing chorister, and he asked me whether I was interested in joining uh, joining a male choir, which I, I did have, actually. I, I always admired male voice singing. The village that I'm from has got a, a, a renowned Welsh choir. It was just a chance conversation, and I decided to take a leap of faith and... Uh, join Pont Newydd and I haven't looked back since I've really enjoyed it it's been a, it's been a great experience so how long have you been a member of the club I joined in 2010 wow, okay. so uh, I'm a, I'm a youngster compared with uh, some of the choristers. My only regret is that I wish I had joined them much sooner. So Martin, tell us about the, the age range of this choir. We've got an average age of 72. We could do with reducing that. Uh, we have got one or two youngsters and we've attracted one or two youngsters in the past, but we could do with more. It does change the tone of the choir. We've got one or more in the 90s, would you believe? Wow. So once you're in the choir, it's something you can do for the rest of your life. Quite a range. 
of ages, but we are looking to attract younger people. Earlier we were talking about the benefits of singing. What would be that benefit? The benefits are great. I think when you finish work, especially, that's a challenge. When you finish playing sport, maybe, that's another challenge. So this, male voice singing, is a challenge. That's how I look at it. Um, because not only have you got to be able to sing, you've got to be able to learn words and the part. Mm -hmm. And so that is a challenge, but the reward then is the overall sound, especially when you sing in large parties. This party at one stage stays 80. So we're down, we do well to stage 30 or 35 now. Still a really good sound. But we have sung at places like the Royal Albert Hall, St. David's, Cardiff. And the sound there, when you get ending up to 800, is incredible. It really does send tingle down the back of your spine. Here's a kind of a big question. What is your favourite music to sing? There's such great traditions in Welsh New Voice singing. Uh, Welsh choir, uh, hymn tunes are great. Uh, they've got the difficulty of learning Welsh, but some people can speak Welsh. It's their first language, as with our chairman. Uh, which is great. So we, can, we can, don't have a problem having Welsh taught to us because uh, he's expert at that. Uh, so I like Gwahaviad. There's some excellent spiritual to be learning one or two new ones now. And they're just any lively music that our audience particularly enjoy. It's so nice to get a great response uh, from our audiences. What really gets audiences going? Well, I think that, that's a difficult question, actually, mm. because in terms of our audience, there is an expert expectation from a proportion of that audience to hear traditional Welsh male voice yes, singing. Yeah. There's an expectation. They expect some of the, the really great Welsh hymns to be sung. Maybe softer songs like Mavanui, for example, mm. another very popular song that, that, that is requested or there's an expectation that, that male choirs will offer that as part of their repertoire. Picking up what Martin says, equally, there's, a, there's an element of the audience then that's looking to have that enjoyment, that, that Maybe that, that bit of spiritual uplift as well, as well. So, so Martin's quite right in, in what he's saying in terms of having a, a lively element in terms in our repertoire, and maybe an expectation as well from the audience to hear some of them. Maybe, for example, songs from from musical theatre or, or some some pop songs. Basically, there's a challenge in terms of I think our, our repertoire, what we include in our in our program for a particular for a particular event. We would like to try and broaden our audience. Yes. And that's appeal to, to, to different sections of that of that audience and give them something that satisfies the, that, that expectation, if you like. So no Ed Sheeran anytime soon? Okay. That's a possibility. Is it? Okay. They are looking to modernise hmm. and that's one genre of music we've considered. Definitely look forward to that. Martin, what about your favourite song to sing? Well, actually, a little bit of a modernist, I guess, in the choir, really, because... I sense our, our audience is dwindling. Our, they, they become older, like us in the choir. And I feel that we really need to change from some of the traditional stuff. I love the Welsh. I'm a massive fan of the Welsh stuff. I also like some of the spiritualist stuff. But I think we have to be modernising. Like, incidentally, at the moment, we are doing a Billy Joel number, which I think think is probably our newest song I would suggest. Well, I'd like to indulge in a, in a bit of Ed Sheeran as you suggested Patrick you know and uh, I think we to attract some new people some younger people into the choir I think we're going to have to change the repertoire quite dramatically from my perspective you know. What would you say to somebody who's thinking about joining the choir because I suppose it can be quite daunting coming into a new batch of friends I suppose. Yes yes. What would you say to them? Don't at all feel daunted by it or, or threatened or frightened because you'll have such a lovely welcome that I mentioned earlier. And the fact that we are open to what these new people could suggest that we could sing, that they feel they can bring to the choir, bring to the party. I think the, the word daunting is, a, is a, exactly what I said, but there's no need to use that word really because we're a big family. We're very, very friendly. All the guys get on with well, we have some fantastic trips. It's just one positive process that, mm -hmm. uh, never mind what age you are, there's just nothing but um, positive empathy everywhere around you. Finally to Martin, how can people get in touch? How can they become part of Pont New Earth Mail Choir? They contact me initially. My contact number, my email address is on the website. 
me on Facebook or simply come along here to Nile Brian. We practice on the Tuesday and Friday. Uh, the building is open from seven. We start practice at half past seven till nine o'clock. We look forward to seeing anybody who's interested. Martin, Ian and Martin from Pont Newth Mill Choir, thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Far beneath the bitter snows lies the sea that with the sun in the spring becomes the road. My, 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 what a way... To start the show. Oh, brings a tear to your eye. A male voice choir and oh my goodness, amazing. Absolutely fantastic. The Pont Newid male choir with Bet Midler's of the Rose and Callan Lan too. Oh, you just can't be a male voice choir. You, you can't. really can't. Just can't, no. And as they were saying, they're always open to new members. So males get your vocal warm-ups ready. Absolutely. And uh, give them a shout if you fancy joining a choir. It's a month. It's for men, very, isn't it? <laughs> very busy month. Every single episode that we do, it's a very busy month for some reason or another. Yeah. This month is no different. This month is no different, and this is when the more traditional November yes. becomes November. <laughs> so yeah, just an important month for men's health in That's general. Right, yeah. So many international days within November, obviously, because Movember, which That's just right, takes yeah. up the whole of the month. People are encouraged to grow their moustaches and their beards and yep. raise money. It is mostly for prostate. It is based around prostate cancer research, yes. Yes, yeah. And we are going to hear from the lovely Di yeah. from Prostate Cancer. And he's going to share how prostate cancer, the organisation, got started, the symptoms to look for, and just raising awareness for your own and recognising those symptoms in others. So here's Di. Di, can you tell me a bit about Prostate Cymru's mission and how does it support men with prostate cancer in Wales? Absolutely, yes. Uh, the charity was founded uh, 20 years ago by a guy called Rain Murray. He was uh, coming home from retirement celebration in London on the train and he went into what's called retention. And I'll explain that a bit later. But it basically, he had to be, he, he went straight to a um, casualty in Bridgen. And Andy Thomas, uh, the uh, one of the foremost urologists in uh, Wales, um, I put a catheter in for him and they started chatting. And, and he explained that Ray had benign swelling and that there was a really revolutionary new treatment called green light laser treatment, but that the NHS couldn't afford it. So Ray and Andy set up the charity uh, 20 years ago on that basis, and they raised money to get a green light laser machine for Bridge End Hospital. The so charity then sort of evolved into getting helping the NHS where they needed it and into educating men of the risks of prostate cancer so that they can catch it early, because if they catch it early, it's 98% curable. So after the green light laser machine, we started pursuing trying to get a robot in for Wales, and we uh, we pursued that, and eventually in 2014, Cardiff got its robot helped by the charity. We didn't, we couldn't afford to fund it totally, but we, we made sure the Welsh Government knew all of it. But what we did do to help was we actually paid for the training of the surgeons to use the robot as the NHS didn't have the budget to do it. So from these beginnings of helping the NHS where the NHS couldn't quite afford to do what it was doing with men's health, we went on to education and now we fund research and the charity has grown now to be the, the foremost uh, prostate charity in Wales. What kind of initiatives that Prostate Camry, can you tell me more about what they've been involved in recently? The most recent thing uh, was the training of the surgeons for the robot. The But we are very active on fundraising. We do the big walk from uh, Cardiff to Bridge End um, and various other train. If we train, we've got grants for training students to study PhDs in urology because um, we need more good urologists to be able to treat men. So the charity is very active in in making sure that um, the research and, and the, the, the talent is attracted into urology so that men can be looked after properly. How does Prostate Cymru raise awareness about prostate health? And I suppose it, it is a big challenge about encouraging men to get screened, isn't it? Absolutely. This is I, I am Head of Awareness for Prostate Cymru. Um, and so we offer free workplace talks to all big organizations, any any organization, as long as you can get 20 or 30 men together. Um, we've got a whole team of volunteers right across Wales who will come and give a 25-minute talk. Now, this 25-minute talk, 
educate men on what their prostate is because 70 percent of men don't even know what their prostate is never mind what problems it can give them later on in life and so this 20 minute presentation is is very much uh, the, the tool with which we we um we disseminate the knowledge and the the thing that everybody needs to know is that um benign swelling which is the of uh, what the founder of the charity was suffering from 60 percent of men at the age of 60 will have a slightly swollen prostate um and it, and basically it, it it presents with symptoms of wanting, wanting to wee a lot and you have to it's worth having it treated because it can lead to complications um so most men will get benign swelling in, a, in their lifetime they need to know what it is and they need to to, to take action about it Prostate cancer is a different kettle of fish. Uh, your chances of getting prostate cancer are one in eight if you're a white Caucasian. They're one in four if you're an Afro -Caribbean, of Afro-Caribbean descent. And it's one in three if you've got any family link. Now, my dad died of prostate cancer, and I had no idea I was one in three. But I found out by sheer accident, because Cardiff were advertising for volunteers to research into prostate cancer. I, I was a rugby referee. I was fit as a fiddle. My hubris was such, I went in to show these boys how not to get prostate cancer. Two weeks after all the tests for the research, I get a phone call. Professor Kinderson here from Cardiff University, Mr. John. Oh, I'm what the hell do you want? Mr. John, I'd like you to come in because you've got a high PSA. I did loads of tests on me. I was um, in on a Monday, out on a Tuesday with a robotic operation. This is the robot I referred to earlier that Wales didn't have. I had to go to Bristol for this operation. And uh, the cancer came out two weeks later, and I've been right as rain ever since. That was when I was 56. I am now 68. I'm still running six miles before breakfast most mornings, and everything is absolutely working fine. I've got no side effects at all. So the message is it's worth getting tested. Now, to get tested, you've got to go to the GP and, and demand a PSA test. Now, the PSA test is not without some controversy. Uh, it, it, it misses about 15% of early-stage cancers, and indeed it overreads by about 30%. So it's not the be all and end all and will not be made a screening test. But at the moment, it's the only thing we've got. And the only way to get it is to go to the GP after the age of 50, if you've got no family history, or after the age of 45, if you have. And then repeat that that uh, that test once every couple of years or once every year, if you've got a family history, to make sure you're being monitored. So you stand a better chance then of, of catching it in the early stages when it's 98% curable, stage one. If it gets to stage four, and I was going to stage two and three in between, it's palliative care. It, it, it's spread from the prostate into the lymphatic system, into the rest of the body, and it can't be, it cannot be cured. Whereas in stage one, it's 98% treatable. So it's, it's one of those um, best kept secrets of society, which is unfortunate, but men should have this knowledge so that they can take appropriate action. It's about early intervention, I suppose, isn't it? Because what resources and support services does prostate can we offer to, to patients and and also to their families too? Yes, we, we've got um, a, 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 a live phone line, which um, we've got um, a very experienced urological nurse, and anybody can phone that line. If you go on to prostatecumry.com, you will see the you can see the number, and anybody who's worried about um, their their health or their prostate. That's the number to ring, and um, Gaynor will phone you back, and we'll have a long chat with you, and re well, I reassure you, or give you good advice as the best uh, way forward, given your concerns. Earlier, you were talking about uh, retention. What what exactly does does that mean? Right, retention is one of the um, rare but severe um, effects of benign swelling. The prostate is a walnut-sized gland at the base of the bladder, and it is functionally it's uh, it, it, it's all about reproduction and control of, of the penis now the um the semen are made in the testicles they migrate through the deferens into the side of the prostate and the prostate stores three months worth of semen and basically um when a man changes from excretion to reproduction the nerves and blood vessels around the prostate close, close the valve at the base of the bladder, stop any urine coming, and it shuts down a, 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 another valve at the base of the penis, and pumps harder, and uh, basically a man is now ready to reproduce. And when a man ejaculates, the prostate goes into spasm, it forces the weight fluid in the semen, and ups the penis so a man can reproduce. And it's not it's not just men, it's all mammals based on the principle. The prostate is 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 there everywhere.
So um, that's what it is, and that's what it does. And uh, as I, the um, retention happens when this walnut-sized gland gets so big, the tube, the urethra to the outside world goes right through the middle of the prostate, and the swollen prostate squeezes that tube and swells into the bladder. So it, re it actually blocks the pipe that uh, that you uh, that you wee through. Now, the, the kidneys, which are pumping urine into the bladder, couldn't give a chuff out where the bladder is. That there's no feedback mechanism from there. So it's basically agony. You're absolutely busting for a wee, and you need to do something about it. You need to go straight to A&E and get a catheter inserted to drain the bladder. Now, it's, it's, it's worth having this knowledge because it's it's something you, you that it's quite rare, but when it, if it does happen, you need it. Say, well, you or one of your friends, you need to know exactly what to do. Now, you were talking earlier about the talks you give to to companies. Now, how can how can people and communities get involved with Prostate Cymru, uh, either through volunteering, uh, fundraising, or or spreading awareness? Well, the, the 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 best way is to go on the website because we've got a team of people in Cardiff in the head office who will respond to any info at prostatecumry.com uh just send your your queries or your um, your desires to get involved and help us to that particular website and you will get a response from our team in cardiff to explain exactly what you need to do either to get a talk which are free um they're very amusing they're not just a clinical diatribe they 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 explain exactly what the prostate is and what it does uh they get the men involved and then it goes on to explain the dangers and what you need to do about it. The uh, fundraising side of it, there's a team of people who organize all the big events. And if you want to volunteer to get involved, they will get hold of you and get you engaged with the team. Di from Prostate Cymru, thank you for talking to us today. Great pleasure. Of all the men who have who listened to this, or indeed any ladies who listen to this, will will spread the word. You know, remember, one in eight or one in four or one in three, it's, it's not long odds. And all it is is a simple blood test, but you have to overcome the hurdles of getting to see the GP and getting that test done. But it's well worthwhile. Get it at stage one, it's 98% curable. Stage four, it's probably not. Perfect. Thank you, Di. If you'd like to be involved in the podcast, please message or voice note on WhatsApp. Our number is 07 131 and thank you, Di, for that. That was just a really important message around prostate and taking notice and recognising and being aware of the changes in oh, your body. Yeah. Such an important message there from prostate cancer. So thank you, Di, for sharing. And that sort of leads us now onto another sad statistic, really, when it comes to male health. Yeah, um, absolutely. Not only was it International Men's Day, that's right. In November, and it's Movember, November. Yeah. There is also Supporting Male Survivors of Domestic Abuse Day, and that was on the 7th of November. There are such sad statistics around males living in an abusive relationship, and we speak to the lovely Jody from Jonathan's house. Yeah, I set up um, Jonathan's house last year. Jonathan's House is a helpline and an organisation that's set up to help male victims of abuse. Abuse can cover anything from domestic to financial to spiritual to sexual to childhood abuse, so we are there for male victims of that. Could you tell me a little bit more about what sort of thing you kind of cover and help support? Through our helpline, our helpline is a 24-7 helpline, and that is open for men to be able to call in and ask for help. We will listen to men. Men can talk as long as they want. We, don't, we try not to use the word victim. Mm. You know, abuse is an experience you go through. Yes. And, and our life doesn't have to be defined by one negative experience. We no, can no, no. move on and go on to a, a more positive experience. So that's what we try to do through our helpline is when men call in, we try to leave them with some hope that actually things can get better. Yes. And we'll put things in place to help that. So a lot of the time men will men who call in are dealing with feelings of isolation, rejection, guilt and shame. So we try to work with men to get through those four feelings, try and help them not to feel so isolated from society, help them to know that their story is not rejected. They're not rejected, they're accepted for who they are. And then we deal with the guilt and the shame 
and a lot of the times men are feeling guilt and shame for th- things they thought they deserved yeah but they never did they're feeling guilt for something that was done to them not mm. by them and so through the helpline that's the first step into our services it's a stigma isn't it I suppose for men number one men with mental health but then if mental have suffered any kind of abuse it's one of those things that men don't talk about anyway but adding the layer of of abuse like that is is different again isn't it yeah yeah so statistically in england and wales it's one in three men wow who have gone through abuse um historically it used to be one in six but now it's one in three it is one in i think it's one in four or one in five men who have gone through sexual abuse and the, the one of the startling statistics that i read that if a man had gone through abuse child, sexual abuse as a child mm. he's 10 times more likely to make a suicide attempt the need for something like jonathan's house especially in wales where there isn't much support for no, men no because men need help especially in areas like Torvine mm. where there is higher rate of poverty mm. there is more lack going on there's not much going on in work wise not much going on for education when you have a look at men I think around one of the statistics I saw it was about 450,000 plus young men who are no longer in education no longer having not able to get fine work not able to get into higher education because mm. they didn't meet standards and then you'll put on to the top of that mm. there's some abuse going on or you go into the the homeless mm. levels I think it's 96 of the homeless population in the UK is men and if you dial that down to 87% of those are actually victims of abuse mm. and the reason why on the streets is because A there was nowhere for them to go mm. social housing won't put them into a house because they believe that the domestic abuse bill only applies to women if you were to take if a family was to go to refuge mm. and domestic abuse shelter for women if she had a boy over the age of 13 he would either be put into social services into another family member or if he hasn't got any of that he would be put into the street this is what faces men and especially male victims of abuse from the age of 13 so the need for Jonathan's house I think you're all about breaking down the barriers not just about for men to be able to talk but I think also for men to realise that they are supported too yes yeah as you know men don't have an issue with talking no they have an issue of being listened to right yes and I think in the past society have slightly got deaf to the cries for men and men will ask for help men have been asking for help but they don't always get they don't those cries don't always get heard and sometimes society hasn't got their facilities to help those cries for help and it's what i'm eager to do is to create enough safe spaces for men to be able to be feel like i'm going through a really bad period mm. but i know there's someone where i can be listened to if somebody's listening to this now what would you say to them there are probably two different people listening to this podcast so you'll probably have men who are listening men who are they're in a situation in a relationship for me i was in a domestic abusive relationship it took me three years after that relationship ended for me to realize actually i was in an abusive relationship wow okay because i'm a man i didn't feel i could ever be abused yeah no true. Yeah, and so but actually as i was talking about it my friend's going that's abuse mm. if that happened to a woman would you stand for it yeah no mm. so a lot of guys i think so if you feel like your finances have a look at your finances if your finances are not being spent the way you feel like they're being spent there's probably someone controlling them if you feel like your friendship control amount of times you're seeing friends if that's being limited there may be some coercive abuse going mm. on or maybe your wife is holding religion against you saying oh if you do that i'm going to report you to the pastor that's known as spiritual abuse wow. so there's many different degrees of abuse mm. so if you a guy and listen to us there is people out there to help that's why I, I love being part of the tall vine guys you know we're linked up with so many different organizations like tall vine talk who are there to listen and so it's important that we have these networks so that when 
someone comes in asking for help, we all work together. But the other type of people who are listening are maybe mums, sisters, yes, right. and friends who are noticing something happening to their friend and are not quite sure what is going on. They're not entirely sure. And if I say something, am I going to lose a friend? Yes, yeah. And the thing is, that's what we're here for too. So if you need any advice, you can call us and we will help and we'll support you find the help that your friend needs. What does success look or sound like for Jonathan's house? The, in the ideal world, it would be that abuse is gone from the world. Yes. But that's not going to happen. Mm. Um, it's to see that there, that abuse is no longer seen as a gender bias crime, that governments will see both female victims and male victims in the same light, that both deserve the same support. So at the moment you have a system called Violence Against Women and Girls, which was very much needed because women need support. Mm. They need help and they female victims. I think that's the news story I saw today saying there's a national emergency. So there's about two, about two million women have been abused. Mm. So that's quite a lot. So they needed to bring in this organisation called VORG. Mm. But for the last 15 years, male statistics have been put into VORG. So when you ask for correct statistics mm. for men, yes. there isn't much. So if you remember the documentary Baby Reindeer, yes. he is classed as a woman. His statistic is classed. If you are groomed, mm. if a 13-year-old boy is groomed, for the last 15 years, that those statistics have been included in VORG. If you remember My Wife, My Abuser, the mm. documentary, he is classed violence against women and girls. So success for Jonathan's house would actually see would mean that actually there's some in government standing that's actually there to support men. Yeah. So at the moment when you go for Jonathan Towers can't get central government funding, but there is central government funding available. Three hundred million pound of the, for funding for domestic abuse services. Fifty seven thousand it went to a male service, all the rest went to women's services. Mm. And that's not saying that women's services don't need it, but if statistics were collected properly, yes. mm. there would be an equal share, which would mean all victims of abuse would be equally supported. Yeah, there's an imbalance, obviously, there. Yeah. And that's what we need so we need to see. So when a boy at the age of 14, he doesn't have to wait 20 years to get a full disclosure. He can actually have someone, a service that's there, available for him to disclose quick. So A, he gets justice for what's happened to him, but also he gets the support to move on so he doesn't have to walk around for 20, up to 20 years, actually. My statistic I saw could be up to 28 years oh. of carrying a, the guilt of being, mm. and the shame of being abused yes. as a 14, 15 year old kid. And then, as you probably know, those sort of feelings will probably link up to something to alcohol addiction, mm. drug addiction. And so these all things are all linked, or there could be a life of crime that he could have got onto. Mm. And how many prisoners are in our prison who are actually a victim of childhood abuse? Yes. And I, the statistic I do have, but not with hand, but it's quite high. And so the aim, the success would be they were able to help younger boys find the support they need before they need to wait till they're in their fifties or sixties. Yes. And that would be. I would love to see as many of those around Wales, so it becomes a social norm. Mm, yes. That men know it's there. How do people get in touch? So we have our website which is um, www.jonathanshouse.org.uk and on there you'll find our web chat. You can talk to us for our website. We have a Jonathan's House Ministries Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. They're all connected up to our web chat. So you can contact us through any of those channels if you don't want to talk to us and because we know that it can be a very hard thing to do. Absolutely. To make that mm. first call. So we are aware that you can just... Sometimes it's just easy just to send a text message saying, help me. Jody from Jonathan's house. Yeah. Thanks for talking to us today. That's all right. Thank you very much. That was Jody there from Jonathan's house. Such food for thought, really. Absolutely. There. But yeah, if, if you are a male and you're in a domestic abusive relationship, or if you know of a man that's in that situation, then they do have a helpline. At they Jonathan's do, yeah. house. Right, yeah. So I'm going to note that now if you want to write it down. So it's 0800 524 4202. 
And they also run a support group at Not For Church, I think, on Saturdays. If you want more information, it'll be on their social media on Facebook and Instagram. Yes, yeah, I, I'm, that's in Upper Second Nod for Church. That's right, yes, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that leads us on to what an episode. <laughs> what an episode this has been from choirs to prostate cancer to, you know, male domestic abuse too. You know, every episode we've done been completely different. This yeah, one's no different absolutely either. Absolutely different. And also just highlighting how much support is out there. Yeah, absolutely. It's sad to hear that people need that support, but how incredible is it that... That the support is on our doorstep. Yes. It literally is on the doorstep of Torvine. Mm. You will find someone in the south, in the north. There is always that available support there. And talking of supportive people... Well, <laughs> and, and this takes us back now because November, we said earlier, it's Movember. Yeah. And, and we've also got International Man's Day. That's right. So for Movember and International Men's Day... The Amazing Communities team of Torvine Council yes. have been getting involved. Oh, wow. Who do we know has been taking part? Growing right? amazing moustaches and beards. Oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> for, for for the month itself. I know Corey is. Corey, that's right, yeah. I know Joel. Yep. Gordon. Gordon. And the lovely Maurice. That's right, yeah. And Maurice as well, apparently. I know he's Morris, but we call him Maurice. <laughs> <laughs> But his wife has said he looks like Luigi from Super Mario Brothers. Oh, <laughs> Mario! Mario! Oh, bless him! And Richard from Gansaka. And Gans Richard Second from Gansaka is doing it, yeah. And I know so many people who are getting involved. I know it's getting colder and people are just growing their beards anyway. Yes. <laughs> just mm. to not feel the chill on their cheeks, I think. But yeah, I've seen some fantastic beards and moustaches. And before anybody asks, no, I haven't. We've seen photos of me when I was a little bit younger and I tried to do a beard. It no. ended up like a goatee. It's a no it's, <laughs> it's definitely a no. no so yeah so um, um with the mo i let everybody else go it's a no to the mo it's a no to the mo for me mo and we'll donate just for the no yeah we will <laughs> those guys from the torvine communities team they, they really got involved and they did a pontypool park pontypool walk, park oh, yeah they as That's well right. so yeah. i believe there's still time to raise money for movember and yep. any bit of that goes towards men's health That's and right, yeah. prostate usually is the the key one but it's overall men's health that it's yes. the important message of November and right, November. Yeah. Hmm. Which leads us on to our news. Our news of from November, we go into December, heading into the, at the end of the year. Because starting on the 2nd of December... In which is our launch day. Which is the launch day of yep. Men's Space. Which Men's Space is all about connections, camaraderie and a cuppa. And a cuppa. Just, yeah, connection, isn't it? Like, connection is so important. Mm. And I think it's vital for men to talk with men. So many people, this is what I feel sorry for my dad. <laughs> because my dad is surrounded by women. <laughs> so he doesn't really get it into much men i think that's what's important and that's why we've collaborated that's with right. four minds and men's marauders rct yeah they do loads of great walk they do yeah the walking and talking for men's mental health and well-being so they're going to be part of it so this collaboration is so important isn't it sheree is amazing from four minds i think you know i've met sheree probably a handful of times and obviously the last time was at the the event of rodney parade mm -hmm. yeah she's a force of Nature. She is, and yeah. the passion that she has to raise awareness yeah, oh yeah, of definitely. men's mental health and to encourage them to open up, to talk, mm. doesn't have to be about their emotions and feelings or anything like that, but that connection to mm. realise what that does for you and yeah. your well-being. She's pa so passionate about creating that awareness. And we want those men that are going to be coming to that group to tell us what they want yeah. from the group. It's not about us dictating what, no. what they want, what we feel they need. Mm. We want them to tell us, this it's, is what I'd like from it, this space. It, and it's going to be a great time. So it's going to be run on Mondays, yep. weekly. We're looking at a four till seven. That's right. So those that are in work, can also kind of maybe pop along pop to the in. last couple of hours, like last as, hour. As you're kind of finishing work, if we also wanted organisations to come along as well a little bit to mm. for them, for their staff to come along and, and also people who have finished work mm. at the end of the day to be there too. M the most re reasons why is to put it in Camavon Hall. Mm. So in between Abersecken and Blynavon on that main road, community hall there is such a well-situated,
saturated place because it's yeah. mostly on people's way home That's from right, yeah. work it is, yeah, exactly. or to somewhere else. Yeah. You know, it's on that main run. We really hope that people will drop in and use it and men gain a lot from that space. So as you know from being around this area, like the north of Torvine has huge amounts of walks. Amazing walks. walks. As does the south of Torvine. Yeah. The north of Torvine especially, because we're so close to the, the Brecon Beacons, we think that they're going to be ending yeah, their walks right, yeah. there and have a cup of tea and a, yeah. a custard cream maybe. Yeah. Oh, you custard know? creams. Oh, oh, okay. I promised something, Whoa. don't I? <laughs> We need to deliver with the custard creams, huh? We need huh? to deliver with custard creams. So that's going to be Monday the 2nd of December, and then they will be weekly, 4 till 7. But on Monday the 2nd... This is exciting stuff. It's the launch. It's the launch. We've been yeah. teasing this on socials for a good couple of weeks. I know. And... I think they think an astronaut's going to turn up at this yeah. point. If not, I'm expecting it to. Our launch day mm. of men's space is going to be from 2.30, and it's going to go on until 7, oh, so yeah. people will have chance to come but for the first hour and a half we've got the lovely guys yes, from right. G&G Barbers yeah. and they are offering their time so they're going to do an hour and a half and they're going to offer anyone that's been taking part in Movember firstly the beard trim let's nice. get rid of it mm-hmm. <laughs> so they're going to offer the uh, free beard trim they're also right offering yes. the chance to win okay. a hamper oh. up to the price of £50. That I is know, awesome. it's a big deal. That is that's yeah. awesome. Love yeah. that. They're going to do a competition of the best beard slash tash, and they're going to be judging that. So yeah. it's a huge thing to be part of. Absolutely. I'm, I'm mm. looking forward to that already. And I'm it's got a, a bit beard. too late to start growing now. I could have oh, seen how if I thought this through properly. <laughs> so that's going to be a huge thing. So thank you for G&G Barbers for getting involved with that I know they're just as excited as we are because they're all about having conversations and men opening up yeah, and talking right. you know barbers my yeah. god unpaid therapists mm, a lot absolutely. of them as are hairdressers so if you you don't have to be just male on for the launch nope. females can come along to that everybody as well everybody is welcome come along just to well have a chat really but we can tell you what's going to be happening mm-hmm. if you wanted to learn more or if you want to bring a friend along you know yeah. it's all about spreading the word exactly, of that yeah. space being there for men from the 2nd of December on a Monday. On a Monday, yeah. But we're really excited for it. We are. Nervous, yeah. but very excited. Very nervous. <laughs> very excited. It's just lovely to see something in the north of Torvine. It is, yeah. I know for me it is. That's a big deal for me. And I think the time of day as well. Yes, yeah. We wanted to try to have, you know, it's there for people who maybe are not in work and mm. also those who are in work. So we're trying to cover it that it's four till seven. You don't have to be there for the three hours. You no. can just turn up for ten minutes. You have can turn up for the three hours. You can turn up at any time. It's exactly. absolutely fine. Pop along, have a cuppa, have a chat. So that Simple brings that. November, November to a close. Wow, that's been probably the busiest month. So it's next been next stop Christmas. Christmas. Next stop, men's space in Carmarthen Village Hall. Yeah, on a Monday night, <laughs> four till seven. Hopefully, see you there. See you there. If you'd like to be involved in the podcast, please message or voice note on WhatsApp. Our number is o seven eight five one one three eight six one zero. This is a podcast from Torvine Talks CIC.